Well, welcome to another Guns Contractors video. And I have been privileged to have been allowed to come and see the new Kubota compact telehandler. This is Kubota's KTH 4815-2. Bit of a mouthful on the numbers. You probably trim a few off there, Kubota. But uh, yeah, real privilege to be able to come and, and have a look at this today. Uh, this is recently launched in the UK. And some of you will know that these machines have been around in Europe for a few years, um, also marketed under the Giant brand. Um, Kubota engines have always been in those machines and they've now brought them into the UK. And of course we gain the Kubota dealer network, which is brilliant. So a real competitor for the Wackanoosen um, little TH412, the Wiedemann that I have reviewed previously on my channel. Um, of course Manitou uh, released uh, a compact machine, very similar dimensions and capacities to this as well. And of course, JCB have uh, two. So there's a few little tricks though that Kubota have done up their sleeve here with this machine, uh, which I will point out through this video. But um, I'll get stuck into the machine walk round and uh, explain more as we go. This is Kubota's latest offering. Uh, first in the telehandler market, they do a lot of other little compact loaders and are, and are well known for that, often selling well in Europe. Um, but this is their first telehandler offering for us in the UK especially. And it's a really compact, powerful little machine. And there's a few nice little details it has uh, over some of the others that I've driven in, in this space. Um, compact enough, it's got a 1.6 meter overall width which is good. She's under two meters high as well. Um, now the beacon actually makes it just uh, a slightly high of that, but this is a neat little tip. You can fold the beacon down um, and she actually locks down like that. So I think that's a pretty neat little, uh, little thing they've done. Um, so it's nice and compact uh, and that is key with these machines really. Everyone wants to talk about whether it is or isn't towable and whether what it can and can't lift, etc., And I will go through all of that. This machine depends on what the spec is and that's really the key and it depends on what your trailer is. I, I'm not gonna get too hooked up on this towable thing. What they've done here is they've gone for performance over weight and they haven't gone with a small engine like some of the other manufacturers to get weight down. They've, they've kept the bigger, the you know, 50 horsepower uh, engine in it and as a result this machine will lift over 1.4 tons to 4.8 meters now a lot of the things that this machine's going to be doing is not about overall height is it we're not looking to lift you know up to third floor or anything that's just not what this machine is built for at the end of the day if you need height you're going to go for a larger machine because running a machine at its maximum is, is never a great idea, despite the fact that it will do it and will do it competently. But this is about getting into tight spaces, um, low areas, maybe underground car parks. Uh, this is the sort of thing that we would use at the Chelsea Flower Show. You know, it's a real tight little space. You need to unload lorries from one side and your telescopic ability to reach forward is more important really than, than the overall um, lift height but it will do it, so um, it will do it, and, and that really is class leading. I just don't really want to focus on that as being the class leading bit, because I think there's other elements of this machine uh, that are kind of more important, certainly for the applications that I use it in. Um, shown here with the bucket, I've just been using it with the bucket, also has forks, and I've tested it with the forks, as you'll see in my driving review in a minute. Um, but starting off at the front, this machine, as I said, is this is the deluxe model. Um, it has therefore more features and it also is heavier than the more basic model. And therefore in its current configuration here, this would be too heavy to tow. However, you can get options that would save a bit of weight. You don't have to have the extra counterweight, but that will reduce your tipping load and your forks. So, it really depends. But where we're at with this machine here is she will sit really comfortably within seven and a half ton weights if you were to put it on a small wagon. Um, and really, you know, we need capacity. There's no point in not being able to lift 1.4 ton to me. That's what a pack of curbs is. That's what a pack of blocks is. 
what is the point in having a machine that just won't quite do it? And, and when it comes to then lifting things like bolt bags, lighter loads, this will do it and it'll boom out further and it'll have more power um, to be on top of that job. So uh, I think they've done, they've played a clever balance here and whilst it'd be lovely to have something that lifts four tons and also can go on a trailer, we're just not in that situation. So be careful with your specs when you're building this up. It is possible to tow it, but really to get the maximum performance, you want the machine we're looking at here. Um, what we've got at the front, uh, we've got currently got two auxiliaries to the front here. Now, that's I've never seen that on a, on a little telehandler before. Um, well, certainly not something that's not a farm one. Um, really good, I think, for powering different attachments. Um, it also has a hydraulic hitch, which you'll see me using uh, in the video. Um, it hits self levels, obviously, as it goes up. It doesn't radial lift like the Wacker. It just stays in, which I quite like, but it will self uh, level as, as it goes up. And they've, they've put a lot of thought into how they've routed all of this, kept the visibility pretty clear from your drivers lying down. You know, there's always a compromise on these machines, but some of the Manitou's, the arm is hugely offset to the side of the cab. And for me, whilst that makes your cab wider, your arms over here and you have this big angled offset bracket gusset thing, which blocks visibility hugely. So kudos to Kubota for keeping it simple and having the boom in the center of the machine. Um, your engine's then in the right place. Your cab's perfectly fine as it is. Um, and yeah, visibility to your forks is, is better for it really. Um, moving around, there are different tire options. At the moment, they're coming in with this particular tire option, like a kind of skid steer type tire. Um, real good for harder, heavy industrial use, um, but there will be in the future turf options and you can actually get them just a bit of a special factory order. Um, there are a few different different ones, but currently this is the tire it's, it's coming into the UK with. Um, we've got a decent amount of lights. We've got one on the boom. We've obviously got our headlights with indicators, etc. Uh, mirrors. We've got a, a single wiper, dual blade that wipes this large area of screen here. That works really, really well. It's out the way. You don't, it's not in your visibility when you don't need it. And you've got three different settings of uh, wiper as well. So you don't have to have it flapping around like mad, like you're driving 80 mile an hour down the motorway. Um, the door, really simple here. Nice, big, wide opening door. Um, plenty of room to get in and out of that. Um, it's another element you'd need to be careful with if you were thinking of putting this on a trailer or anything with sides is that the door could potentially, you know, you wouldn't be able to open your door very far if you're on a, it's 1.6 wide, remember? So just things to be aware of on that, but they're all the same. The, the whack is the same as this, the Manitou, they're all like that. Um, the door, you know, gives you a nice low step in height there, nice flat floor, nice and easy to clean. Um, and obviously you can open the glass piece on the back. Now this does protrude a little bit past here, um, but certainly within, I'd say, the cartilage of the machine, it doesn't look the worst, um, but it is literally only glass. So you just have to be aware really with these machines um, that you've got a glass door on them and try and stay away from uh, obstacles because yeah, they're, they're, but they're all the same. They all run this similar, similar system. Got to have some compromises somewhere. Um, but getting in, the cab is nice and easy. We'll talk about the cab in a minute, um, but yeah, certainly nothing to complain about here. It's got some nice thin uh, lines. It doesn't, the cab structure isn't too bulky um, and the visibility with this window being so close to the back of the machine uh, is really good. You can, you can see exactly where your back of your machine is, which in tight spaces, which is where this machine is, uh, it's where it's gonna be. The lights are nicely kept in board. Again, you know, if you were in a tight space, I'd close that window and, and you've got a very clean line down the side of the machine here. The lights don't stick out. You'd have to be a real animal to get in and attack the lights. In fact, you'd be doing damage way before any of that. So that's quite neat. Um, hoses are nicely tucked up. There's gonna be a couple of hitch options. We're not there quite yet uh, for where we are in the UK. Um, this has got the extra counterweight, as I say, which is what all of this is. Um, but you can actually get a pickup hitch for farming applications, etc. Um, and they do say they're going to offer some more um, as this model progresses. But currently, uh, that's the hitch type we've we've got. Uh, moving around, exhaust is routed out the way. 
um, nothing's really too bad. And then we get to the engine. Now, quite a big engine cover and to save a bit of weight, you know, we are on a fiberglass engine cover. But apart from the fact that it's maybe arguably a little bit on the flimsy side, Again, it's always a compromise on weight with these things, and they have strengthened it in places uh, to make it work. What it does give us, though, is fantastic access to the engine. So we've got this Kubota 50 horsepower engine, um, got our fuel filters. There's two of them. There's one down here, which you can actually access uh, from the underside down here. Um, sadly, it doesn't have a fuel bowl which is a bit sad, but it does have a sensor, they tell me. So if it does get water in, there is a sensor um, and it can, be, it can be drained out. I'm just surprised it doesn't have a, doesn't have a, a you know, that, that's clear glass bowl, um, but minor details really, because otherwise, you know, it's a lot of good news under here. Easy access to the oil filter, um, easy access to the fan belts just behind this guard. They've thought about getting to the battery, which by the way is tucked down there. So we've got a nice, easy positive um, and a negative here. So can jump start it or other things nice and easy use that as a as a jump starter rad cap etc uh, radiator bottle all here hydraulic level can be checked at this point nice and simple you can clean out your rad um, your guards here and your radiator nice and easy plenty of access down there to to clean out the rads which is nice and with a hydraulic fan on the deluxe model they tell me that it'll be fitted with a reverse fan as well. So very, very nice, uh, all big machine features really uh, in a small machine. And even the battery, which is arguably mounted in a bit of an awkward place down here, you know, they've given us a, a little unboltable door here. Get that out. You can even see the, the clamp through there. So I think they've done quite well at thinking about access overall. And this engine cover, when it's shut, um, I shut it properly. Uh, it, it, it's nice and sleek. They've had little cutouts for improved visibility and things. I think they've done a good job with that. Um, and yeah, you can see everything you need to. You don't need too many door mirrors. You know, when you end up with like two or three mirrors up here, you've got a nice simple uh, setup and, and you've got plenty of visibility. They've also put a lot of metal into this machine. To me, you know, this boom section's really made out a decent bit of plate. Um, and they've thought about where the forces are, gussets where it's needed. I think they've done a decent job with this. Of course, it's helped by the fact, as I said earlier, that that arm isn't offset. So yeah, I've been, um, I've been fairly impressed and, and you don't see too much twisting or forces when you're lifting loads. I mean, we've only got some couple of IBCs here to, to play around with, but um, I've had a go with the bucket as well, put a bit of load on that. Um, and actually, I think it could run a much bigger bucket than this uh, for sure, um, if you needed to, especially if you had lighter applications. So yeah, overall, um, very impressed really with the outside. I'll take you through the cab and through my thoughts in there. So inside the cab, good access for the door, nice level floor and not too much in the way, decent grab handle and swinging up in here uh, isn't too much of a chore. So you find yourself in the cab and everything generally is in front of you. There's nothing tucked away back here you need to play with. Um, there is a little bit of a storage box for the manual um, and even behind the seat there is somewhere to put a few plans or drawings etc and you can open the window but you don't actually need to be playing back here. Everything is in front of you which you'd be surprised isn't always the case in these little, um, in these little telehandlers. Heater controls are down by my knee here. That works, it's okay. Um, heater vents are up on the dashboard, which is where they should be, pointing at the windscreen and the side windows. So you can actually keep your windows clear, a nice touch. This, uh, this is all adjustable in multiple ways. Um, obviously it retracts nice and easily, and it also um, comes up and down towards us. So it's very easy to get quite comfortable uh, in this machine. Um, doesn't take uh, too much effort at all. And that's, you know, not standard on every on every little telehandler. In fact, some of the bigger telehandlers could learn from this. You know, that's another big telehandler feature in, um, in a small machine. A few buttons here, um, most notably your quick hitch button to operate your quick hitch and your override button should you need it. Now, two schools of thought on this. The override button really is an emergency button 
you know, that's in a nice, easy position to use it. And you can use it with one hand while you're operating the controls with your other. Uh, arguably, is it too easy a position to be tempting to use it all the time? Uh, you know, I've you'll see in my driving video, I give it a bit of a test and push it a bit more than um, than the load indicator uh, would allow. And of course, you've got to when you're testing these things, right? But in day to day operations, you sh really shouldn't need to because this machine has got more performance than a lot of its competitors. And therefore, <laughs> it's tempting to push it, of course, beyond uh, you know, it's, it's day to day work, right. Where it would normally be. But, um, for me, uh, it makes, it makes sense to have it in front of you. I think you can then see, um, you get eight seconds of use for that, by the way, before she'll cut back out again to get yourself out of trouble. And that will just allow you, if you're the wrong side of a fence and the load indicator cut you out, it'll stop you going a bit further. You can go, okay, well, I need to readjust this, move the machine, whatever it might be, but you can at least hold one hand on this and operate the controls the other you're not having to put a hand up over up here or sometimes they fit them down here by the side you know there's none of that going on so for me that sort of works um, other features when you've got the steering wheel in front of you dashboard is nice and simple uh, nice and easy to see and when it lights up uh, which I'll turn on here um, you've got everything really simply in front of you water temperatures here um, you can see your revs over there, uh, you can see your fuel, speed, it's all straight in front of you. Steering mode, really, really straightforward. Um, so I like that. There's no looking around to uh, work out what you're in. You've got a whole load of buttons here on this control and pretty much this is the only place you need to touch when you're operating apart from the steering wheel. So your rabbit mode uh, or in turtle is all controlled from this button here, really straightforward. Your forward and reverse is all on this little flick uh, switch here, nice and simple. Telly in and telly out is over here. And on the back of the joystick, which I'll try and show, um, is your auxiliary. So um, you can switch that at the moment using this button um, between the two functions that you've got uh, on this machine. The more basic machine will just come with one auxiliary to the front and that will be on one of the levers which will otherwise be situated here. But um, for now, um, you, don't, uh, you don't need that. So yeah, really impressive. Um, handbrakes here, nice and simple, fly on, fly off handbrake, um, works, works well. Uh, other buttons down here, uh, work lights, your beacon, um, windscreen wiper, etc. And stuff you don't need to touch too often. Half decent radio in it as well, get the tunes going, which, you know, if you're in these things for a bit, is quite nice. And it's got decent speakers, uh, two speakers up in the back. So um, that's all, all very good. Um, yeah, nice place to uh, spend a shift, to be honest. And people might say, oh, the cab isn't quite as wide, maybe, as some of the competitors, but... As I said, for me, I'd rather have that arm and visibility to the forks better because I mean, I'm not the biggest guy, but I'm not small either. My love of chocolate biscuits is sadly uh, catching up on me in my late 30s. But it, this pillar, it's not it's not really too in the way. And you've got a, quite a nice, comfortable, adjustable, by the way, um, armrest here, which lines up really nicely with where you want your hand. Um, yeah, it's comfortable. It's comfortable. It's easy, uh, easy to use. And it's it's not it's not too complicated um but they've got some nice little touches uh one thing to note that is quite amusing um and kubota will always uh, try and save the spiel on this uh, it's they've gone for the vegan leather option um with the with the stitch dash leather uh yeah very uh very tasty kubota i i see uh see where you've gone with that um but honestly it's got a nice high back seat suspension seat yeah, it's it's nice and uh, nice enough place um, to spend a few hours if you have to. Um, of course, these machines are also ones that you get in and out. And as I said, the door access very very good. Um, real got a quality feel about it to be honest. Um, with yeah, the, you know the way it shuts and, and things. So generally very very impressed. Uh, overall, if I had any criticisms, uh, I would say it's a shame that there isn't two distinct versions really one that maybe is definitely towable if you'd have kept the engine you could have maybe saved on some of the other bits maybe the cab could have just had a um like a cage which they actually do do a um ca a canopy version 
sadly for regulations you end up you still need your windscreen you still need your side door um, that side glass you still need your rear glass um, you just basically end up saving on um, some of the glass on this side and it just doesn't save enough weight for me um, I would love to have seen a real towable uh, option but it's a we i think i've come to realize that if you want the performance at the front end you need the weight in the back end and if i'm comparing this to the sort of machine i would drive maybe uh, the avant 860 um this will you know it won't quite lift uh what the avant will close in but it'll lift it a lot further what it can lift it'll it'll, it'll boom out more um, and the four wheel steering option is way better way better than what you'd get on an event. So I've been impressed with it. Um, it'll be interesting to see where they price these um, because I, I really like the fact that you can get the auxiliaries on the front. You can run loads of different attachments there. I think there's a huge amount of versatility in that. And I see a decent market for these um, on tight construction sites, but also um, in the, you know, the landscaping area that I I play in often, nurseries, etc. The ability to load lorries from one side, a decent telescopic reach, proper telehandler driving, for me, uh, is a big advantage. And as is the Kubota backup that you now get with this. So, um, yeah, been um, been quite impressed with this machine overall. So that's a ton of water on the front. machine actually handles it very competently. You can see the load indicator. So that's cut out at, it's got to be a good meter or so in front of the machine. That's not too bad. And we have got an override switch as well, which will allow us to go that a little bit more. And in fact, she will go quite a long way past, uh, past that point. So I think that's quite impressive uh, for a little telehandler like this. Um, when it comes to tricky situations where you've got, you know, just something that's a little bit further on the trailer, maybe if you're loading onto the back of a lorry, um, you know, you can quite competently load um, heavy loads, you know, well beyond really where a machine of this size um, should allow you to go uh, from both sides. So you can see we can't quite get right to the edge of the lorry but I tell you that's not far and now it's not letting me put it down but I've got this little override button here it just allows me to drop it down safely and now it's back on the trailer so it's not too hard either to just pick it up and scoot it across the trailer um, either so nice and uh, nice and easy and you can load that over a ton load to the far side of a trailer which I think is uh, it's good and for the size and the compact nature of this machine I would say that's more performant than my experience with the Wakanusa Wiedemann equivalent um, that I am more used to using. Now this dashboard is is quite long and so visibility to loads on the ground aren't it's not ideal. You can see if you have to just lean forward a bit. Having said that, that helps a lot to make this cabin not feel too cramped. Um, you, you know, you, you don't feel like the windscreen's in your face, um, which you can do with some of these machines. And whilst it's not the widest cab in terms, you know, of, of a telehandler, um, it's more than acceptable, um, completely more than acceptable. Uh, for its compact dimensions. So I would rather have a machine that fits um, within, you know, through gaps, etc., uh, than I would have a particularly wide cabin, which all I find really is they tend to offset the boom to one side um, because this cabin's wider. And then you end up with this offset fork head and, and it restricts visibility even further. So um, for me, uh, that works that works really well now this will lift 1.4 ton in this configuration um, up to its total height uh, of 4.6 uh, meters which is which is impressive but 
really, that's not what you do with a machine like this. That's not the sort of work that you do. You're not, you know, you're not going to take things up to a max height here. This is for, this is for tight spaces, low overhead spaces. You're working in an underground car parks, etc. Um, but you know, if you do need to load up to a second floor, for example, you know, you've got good visibility uh, up to the top of the forks there, which is hard to see uh, on the camera. But as you boom out. Um, you know, there is a decent, there's decent visibility up to the top of there, um, which is helped hugely by this single one canopy piece of glass. Um, disadvantage of that, of course, is it's going to be expensive if, you know, something was to fall on it and crack it. Um, but uh, overall, you know, 90% of applications, I don't think you're going to be working up that high. And I'd rather have the visibility personally, um, you know, especially as an owner operator, uh, this machine, as you can see, it, it flow shares well, that's booming in and coming down, um, and it'll do that as well uh, to an extent when you're booming up. Now, because you've got proportional roller, you obviously can play with how much boom out you want versus uh, it going up, which is very, very easy to use. And, and I think you could you know, quite easily lift a delicate something uh, onto a loading bay or something, you know, really, really simple. Um, so that all works. That all works well for me. You can also switch very easily on the controls um, in terms of the speed you want to travel. Um, it will obviously go as fast backwards as it will go forwards, um, and you can switch that uh, nice and simple, all from one joystick button here. Which, again, everything is in one place. I'm not having to reach forward for anything. Um, it's all nicely to hand, and and that is that is really quite welcome. Um, and, and at this height here with the trailer, yeah, visibility is, uh, is perfect. Forward and back is all just on my thumb, uh, on the face of the roller. To my right is my extension. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's very quick to get, to get the hang of. Uh, I'm not having to reach over and use, uh, I need to go back slightly for that. Uh, not having to reach over and you know, reach up to the steering column for anything. Um, it's all just at, the, at the fingertips, really. Um, all of the fingertips. It also, this machine has two auxiliaries to the end of it. Um, the more basic one will have just one, uh, which will be on a, on a lever, but this is the, the deluxe model here. Uh, and that allows you to um, run two hydraulic flows to the end of the boom only disadvantage of that I would say is that the way they've got it configured is uh, it's all it, you can only control one at a time so you have a button on the auxiliary here that allows you to switch between one of your auxiliaries and the second one and personally I wonder for the cost whether it would have been better to have done that with just a 12 volt solenoid on the end that would allow you to switch between your different flows um, you know, for me, that would have that would have been plenty. But um, other things really to note in here, I think visibility overall is very good. Uh, the boom sits nice and low uh, into the structure. Um, as I say, it's slight compromise on the on the forks, but you can see the tips. You know, it's it's doable, um, and rear visibility is very very good. And the cab itself has has quite a bit of room in it. Um, Aircon is an option, uh, which would be most welcome uh, in the hotter climates. You can also open the rear window, of course. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot to like. Heater controls are easy to get to, down by my knee. Um, the vents themselves actually point at the windscreen, which again is something that I would say um, is an advantage over the, the, the Wackanoos and Wiedemann uh, that I have used before. That has a heater box that sort of warms up your right elbow. It's a, it's a terrible uh, design really um, and doesn't actually get to the end of the let's get this pallet more central really um, yeah it doesn't actually get to the windscreen so it's yeah it's, it, I think I think this is a lot better for that I've got three vents in front of me um, that are all all pumping around to keep the air going so Again, nicely, uh, nicely done by Kubota. The controls in front of me here, I can see my hours, I can see my temperature, I can see hydraulic temperature. I've also got my four wheel steer 
Um, I can do two wheel steer in this deluxe model and I can do crab steer. Now crab steer, um, I'm told is on one of these buttons here. Uh, see if we can get that to work. So to use crab steer, what you've got to do is hold the button down um, and then it'll actually go into crab steer. Um, it's a bit of a tricky thing to use to get them lined up. That's better. So it's a bit of a tricky thing to use, crab steer. Um, I kind of understand why they've put it on this uh, on this button because if you're in a tricky situation, you can just hold the button, steer, and it'll go into crab steer. But for me, it's it, it's very easy to become out of line. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to to get your wheels back lined up before you let go of the button. Because if you let go of the button and it's not lined up. It goes back into four wheel steer and then you can get yourself uh, in a bit of a tricky situation like that. So not, not ideal, but also sort of has its own advantages in a way. Um, yeah, it's a, a compromise, I guess. Overall, I really like this single joystick uh, control for my auxiliary on the back at the front. I've got my uh, up and down crowd uh, by moving the entire unit. And obviously my forward reverse and my boom in and boom out is all on the one stick, which I really like. Handbrake's easy to get to, lights, etc. windscreen wiper. That's actually a full unit that wipes the entire screen. Um, and again, you can have it on intermittent. So, you know, there's a lot of things, nice things to think about here, or you can have it continuous. Uh, as, uh, as that. So three different speeds of wiper, quite nice to have. You know, we're not all driving down the road at 40 mile an hour, um, needing to have the wiper on flat out. Uh, speaking of road speed, this machine uh, should do 25K. That's what it's rated to, um, four wheel steer. You can go to two wheel steer, um, really for the road as well. It has those options, um, but it depends on the spec of, again, of, of the models here, uh, whether you get your deluxe or uh, you get your um, sort of lighter weight, more basic machine. So yeah, that's the options. We've got the radio, speakers behind me. It's quite nice. Um, say heater controls are all down here. It's, it's, a, it's a tidy enough place to be. Quite automotive really in its feeling. Uh, it got a lot of sort of leather, faux leather. I think they call it vegan leather these days. Uh, it's not actually leather, but a bit of stitching. It's not a bad place to be. Um, somewhere to put my stuff. Yeah, can't, um, can't complain comfortable enough to sit in and uh, compromises of course for a compact machine but certainly um, you know not the worst that I've, I've been in by far and everything really does fall quite nicely to hand. So this machine has got the hydraulic hitch option and will run the Euro style hitch so there'll be plenty of attachments uh, from the farming world that will fit on this machine um, and plenty available second hand as well so um, that's nicely locked in really simple and easy to use um, and I've hooked up that bucket there nice and easy now this isn't the biggest bucket in the world could uh, could be a little bit wider to be honest no doubt it would handle a slightly bigger bucket but we'll make do with what we've got um, as usual with these bucket designs, tricky to see um, just how much uh, you can get in. Now we've got a locking diff on this machine, which is a real advantage. So when we start to spin up and we're pushing into a pile, um, in theory I should be able to lock the diff and get a bit more out of her, um, which is great. Another feature is that with the boom fully retracted, um, which of course is how you would operate your bucket, um, it will automatically um, not kick off uh, on the load indicator, which is nice. So seems to be a decent amount of power there. Of course, helped by the nylon 50 horsepower engine in this machine. Um, you know, that does help uh, when you're talking about running into piles, pushing up, um, maybe you're running compost, loaders, etc. cetera. Um, you know, this will, have that bit of power, that bit of grunt that you need uh, to get into piles, which is which is most welcome. And I guess that's really the compromise with these machines. You know, th th there's there's two sizes of engine you can get in the competitors. Um, some of them don't run that. Some of them have only got uh, you know the one size, the 25 horsepower engine, which of course gets you 
uh, under the emissions regulations required to run a DPF, etc. Um, and there's some advantages to that, no doubt, you know, in terms of cost and, and simplicity. But for me, you know, this machine has got plenty of power um, to run, you know, a, a better attachments, more attachments. Um, and you know you can do a little bit of grading work with it as well. We'll try to go here. I'll just boom out slightly so you can see uh, the cutting edge. Because again, just need that little bit of visibility. Um, and you know it's relatively controllable um, if you're doing any of that kind of work. It's not the uh, not the best machine for that sort of thing, but you know you can at least smooth out your ruts. Um, pretty straightforward. So yeah. Happy enough uh, with bucket performance. I mean, obviously we've only got a pile of loose material here to play with, but you know, she will, um, she'll push into it. And even with the boom out, um, obviously that will bring the load indicator into it again, but um, she will, you know, she'll, she'll do the job. So um, you could heap up a pile real high with this. I mean, you know, the, that extra reach um, and a bit of power, cycle times aren't bad. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it would be a versatile loading machine for sure. Um, I actually think you could run a run a bigger bucket with this. Uh, definitely, in fact, uh, it would it would handle it. Uh, depending on the material you're moving, obviously, the heavier materials, um, no doubt, um, need a uh, yeah, need a slightly smaller bucket. You've also got really good retention. You know that bucket fills right up there. Uh, so yeah, happy enough with uh, bucket performance. Uh, I think that would be a a real useful tool if you were to buy one of these of course you want forks but i think a general purpose bucket at least is uh, is a must for this um, and obviously with those auxiliaries you could run grabs either bale grabs muck grabs um, you could probably run a snow blade on the front of it for a plow especially with the twin um, acting auxes uh, yeah there are lots of options uh, that you can't get on any of the competitor models so yeah happy enough with uh, with its load of performance for sure. So that's my thoughts on the little Kubota telehandler. Uh, it's been a real privilege to come down here today and get to play with it. I believe there's only a couple in the country. So to be able to come down and have Kubota say, you know, come and give it a go, Ollie. Uh, it's been a real privilege. So thank you for that. Hope you've enjoyed watching. Uh, as always, please uh, keep liking and subscribing. That's how I get these great opportunities to come and test this sort of kit. And I don't know, maybe one day I'd like to get one uh, on a job of mine because I've got a lot of use for a machine like this. Um, and I think it's an increasing market uh, that we haven't really seen uh, too much of in this country, but uh, yeah, I see, it. I see it increasing. And I think the more people realize what you can actually get done with one of these little mini tele handlers, loaders, multi-use machine really. Um, yeah, I think they'll become more and more popular anyway. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again soon.